Hey. Hey, Ashley. Hi, Miss Kim. How are you? Good. How are you? I think Jasmine. I'm good. Is, is that um Kayla? Hey, Jalen. Jasmine. Hi, Miss Kim. Hey, how's everybody today? Good. How are you? Good. Now, who is this up here? I can't see your face. Is that Kayla? Brittany trying to get on. This is. Hello. Hey, Brittany, how are you? Good, you. Yeah. Ellen, 23. Kayla. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. It's Kayla. Kayla. <laughs> okay, I can only see part of your face. I'm just checking. All right. Y'all ready to party? This is how we do it. Hey. <laughs> All right. Want to put that on? <sighs> Full moon and Gemini, too. How about that? Right. Yeah. Keep it positive. Mm. You look very pretty today. I like your hair that way. Oh, thank you. It, You're welcome. It acted right. It did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um. Hi. Hi. Oh, my Lanta. Okay. I got two iPhones. I wonder what that. Oh, joining. Well, we got on our African attire. Something like that, Miss Kim. I, I'm I'm in transition on my hair. Always. Well, you know, while we're waiting just a few minutes with everyone else coming on, um, what I will say is is that generally I don't check for the moon like Llewellyn's um site. Llewell that's a good site to check for like when you're doing your hair. Um mm -hmm. because um for the first time, hold on one minute. Hi, how are you? Hi. Um, for the first time, um, I think in all of my life, maybe, or I just noticed it that. Hi. Hey, how are hey, you? I have my camera off. Hold on, I'll just face real quick. And then I'm gonna okay. take the camera off so you can see that I'm here. Hey, Hi. how are you? It's good to see you, ma'am. All <laughs> the hard work. We commend you for all the hard work. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm going to turn off my camera because I'm taking notes. Okay. Hi, come on. Everybody's going to take notes. Hey, Nyla. Uh, let's see. No, I don't want to. So it's I was me, getting ready to say, kid. as everyone was coming on, I usually don't have problems with my hair. And um, about three weeks ago, it was around when the new moon was coming in and um, I didn't pay attention to it because I always do my thing. And I put a relaxer in and I felt like, what happened to my hair, you know? Um, it just wasn't the same. And so Brittany made me think about it because she said my hair looked nice, right? And I'm like, I finally got it to do right, but you have to pay attention to, uh, the moon concerning uh, hair and skin and when you're going to do a uh, surgery. Um, let's see. Hi, Honora. And Hi, um, how are you doing today? Good. So um, you have to pay attention to the moon. I don't mean be like a hypochondriac or over obsessive with it, uh, but pay attention to the moon. Um, because sometimes it will... Uh, I would say a lot of times, you know, um, it will uh, do harm if we're not supposed to cut it at certain times and surgeries um, affect our body. So um, in negative I ways. Have a question. 
Hi. Are we, are we allowed to ask? Like, how do, I'm sorry. Are we asking questions as you go, Prophetess Kim? Or we do you have a system that we wait until you get to? Because I don't want to feel like it's just me or you on here, and I just jump in and just be like, I have a question. So is there It'll a process? Be you. It would be you. Okay. I think okay. that um, I'm okay with asking questions because it actually inspires me or um, provokes me. Just not long ones so we can um, get through the hour and um, okay. not hold anybody up because you got to, you know, what are you doing, a full moon? Yeah, that, yeah, I am. Um, so my question is simple, right? Um, so my question is, does your emotional aspect also play into your decision when you go into cutting your hair because i know like um full moon should be for releasing so you really shouldn't do surgeries in the full moon right um, because you, you know you're releasing energy so mm -hmm. does that play an emotional role also when you're looking at um like surgery as well as cutting your hair or should you be tapping into um maybe like your <laughs> what's going on there before making any like decisions like that yeah so what happens is is that um like the nodes have shifted um a lot of people they felt the shift the emotional uh part of the shift was felt more than maybe some of the other um north um, the node shifts you know what i'm saying so um yes your emotions play a part because like um you know when the moons come up if i'm answering you correctly some people are, um, they begin to act out of sorts. And it, you know, it's because the, the tide is coming in and going out. So the mm -hmm. tide causes um, the emotions of individuals that are not disciplined to act out of sorts. And that's, that's one of the main things like, um, you know how uh, Kamoy uh, would um, tell me that she wouldn't pray, right? So, like with Jesus and, and, and Peter, when he woke uh, Jesus up, it was because he was emotionally distraught. And he needed to master his own emotions. So all of this is right there in the Bible. It's just mysteries that people haven't seen. Um, and, a, you know, you get to the place where you can get people to understand that it's not. Some people are religious because they are rhetorically talking scriptures, but when you start mastering, if it's Buddha or if it's Krishna, um, Kuan Yin, all of those ascended masters, um, you're going to recognize that they mastered life in levels. And that's why they are able to tell people from uh, books and scriptures um, or even visiting them. These masters will visit you that. Um, about things it's, it's not religion jesus was a master all right so uh did i answer your question it does um because what i hear you saying is peter if i'm not responsible he's responsible for faith right so um breaking down you're tapping into the aspect of yourself where okay you do need to speak aka pray life you know into your faith right so you do need to have these communications with self or with the arc with um i want to say with the with the what do you call it the archetypes within self so you can master self right right um and yeah and, 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 and then I, I guess I'm still trying to wrap my head around like um, where Peter fits um, uh, in the Zodiac. Like what is he representing in the Zodiac? Um, let's let's do a class a on that another time. So write that okay. down because that's good. Um, okay. okay, I'm gonna make a note. Yeah, let's do a class on that and let's go into this one and um, um, start so let's see who is Gemini on here who's a, who's a Gemini birthday coming up I'm a Gemini moon okay I'm a Gemini moon okay Gemini moons and I'm Venus you're a Venus moon Gemini Venus. Okay. No uh 
Sun Gemini's, huh? No, my Mars is in Gemini. Okay. All right. All right. So um let's just um take some deep breaths because I feel like um we got some energy on here that needs to like be calm, right? People feel like they've been moving, so you can come in and just be calm now. Calm. So just take a deep breath in and, and then blow it out. Take another deep breath in and then blow it out. So life, life happens, okay? The thing is, is that we don't have to actually play into life happening. That's, that's a part of what this is all about. When you go to uh, classes that teach you about the zodiac sign or self-confidence, it's about mastering emotions that get taken away with life and your focus is only on life. Like at this time, you could be seeing what you wanna manifest because this is the time. It's not the time to be worried. It's a time to be um, seeing within yourself what you desire and believing it. But if you believe the distraction, then what happens is that's what your fruit will be manifesting from this, the moons, okay? So with that thought, it's like you, you begin to look into your own mind and say, mind, cl calm down. Because you can feel the energy. My voice is starting to like ripple. All right, so. Here we go. I'm trying to get to my page. And everybody, um, you got something to write with, right? And you got your paper. If not, I do have, um, I can send the video. And um, you'll be able to get it. So try and focus on um, your spark of intuition or put that on your paper. The spark of your intuition, there's a flame coming up. So Gemini and its symbol are derived from the Greek mythology, Egyptian, and other cultures. Um, religions picked up some of these signs and symbols and they did not attach um, the archetype to it, and they actually use them. However, um, the Gemini uh, symbol, it is, um, uh, it's duplicated, the sign is twins, and that would be a, a sign of duality. Um, the thing about duality is it is not explained in most religions and cultures. So when we're going on life's path and we don't understand that duality is a part of the beginning process of our life and duality is a part that we're actually wanting to work out so that we can only see one vision, you know, like the single eye, because duality means that we see two. So here, the twins are a sign of duality. And wherever you have duality, that means that your mind is in two different places. Um, the twins represent even the brain where it's split, one side and the other, okay? And um, so when your brain is thinking, rather than there being two different conversations, um, one of the works that I would learn how to do is just bring in divine order into my mind because if you have your mind on one thing and then on another, then you know, you're scattered. And you can, that's the power of man, you can bring your mind into oneness. The mind and the heart brought into oneness causes you to come into more of your authenticity. So the twins, they represent all of this here because they, they um, 
they work over the mind. Like right now, a lot of people are feeling a lot of energy and their mind is, you know, in a lot of different places. You know, people haven't been sleeping and it's because of the Gemini or the Mercury energy. So that's something if anyone didn't know, um, you definitely can sit down, begin to take deep breaths to get that energy more um, balanced because that's one of the keys. You, you write down balance. Balance is what you want out of life. You want balance in every area of your life. So if you are able to bring your mind, body, and spirit into um, balance, the divine order will flow through your life. All right? So moving on, let's explain um, some of the um, attachments to duality and words that can help us uh, understand. And this is according to uh, Webster. Um, my page went away. Um, Webster says that duality is an instance of opposition or contrast between two concepts or two aspects of something, um, a dualism. Uh, it also um, says it's a doubleness, duplexity, um, dichotomy, polarity. And I liked polarity because one of the things that we don't understand even with mental health, when people are suffering from like bipolar, um, they don't understand that it's a polarized um, situation. One pole in the um, anatomy is not working, um, and so it can throw the whole anatomy off, and it affects the brain. The other pole may not be working, one or the other. And so here we are. We have, um, you know, two poles within us, and the polarity is not working properly. And so then. Um, we, um, in most cases, I'll say that black people will wait to go to the doctors um, when it comes to mental health and this uh, bipolar um, disease will get worse. All of the mental health diseases will get worse if we don't get help and they will extend or um, excel in, into something else, all right? So polarity has a lot to do with that. And, and so this zodiac sign works with the mind. Um, it also um, is attached to the word separation because until, until the twins come together and that's where we are um, finding that we are in power to bring them, them together, then they will be doing their own thing like darkness and over here and um, light over here, right? And we want darkness and light to work together because it can. And it's more powerful that way. Um, it's an acceptance that we uh, have to uh, come, come to. And then that means that we have to throw out some of the old um, information that we got where darkness was a bad thing. So, you know, to make it easy, if darkness is a bad thing, then ask yourself why children are in a dark place in the mother's womb before they're born. A seed has to be in the dark it goes into the ground and the produce or the production of the seed comes forth. So the dark side is not bad. This is a message that we have to get over because we have to embrace and stop stuffing the dark issues because in the times of Mercury and um, you're transforming, what's gonna happen is Mercury is gonna bring it up. Uh, the sign is gonna bring up uh, the darkness is um, Scorpio. Okay, and so I'll stop there, but you get the message. So Gemini is a positive, mutable sign um, under the tropical zodiac, and you got the Placidius and um, what's the other one? Anyway, I'm gonna move on, I ain't gonna stay there. Um, tropical zodiac, uh, the sun uh, transits uh, this sign between May 21st and June 21st, so those are the dates concerning the Gemini. Um, and in Greek mythology, I love to do the history to discover where it began. That's um, something that I have to do. I have to find my way back to the beginning uh, as far as I can with everything, even like with money. 
so that I can understand. And so people will think that I'm crazy because I understand where money came from and that kind of thing. But the twins, Castor and Pollux, um, known as Dioscori, they were from the Greek history. So in Greek mythology, Dioscori are the twin brothers Castor and Pollux, also called Pola Deuces. Their mother was Lydia, but they had different fathers. Um, I can't pronounce this father's name, but Tidarius, maybe that's his name, Tidarius, uh, the king of Sparta, and we've seen movies on Sparta, uh, was the father of Castor. Uh, hence, he was immortal, mortal, not immortal. And that's a, a, a pretty um, necessary uh, thing that you wanna write down because you can get to the epitome of what's going to come next. So Castor was mortal and um, Zeus was the father of Pollux. So here we have a demigod, all right? However, there are different versions as to whether the twins were both mortals, both immortals, or Castor was mortal and Pollux was um, demigod. Uh, there's an a reference to Castor and Pollux in the Acts of um, Apostle Paul. Um, Paul talks about um, the twin brothers uh, and how they got on a ship uh, going to Alexandria uh, with him. So that is in the Bible uh, that people run away from and they don't understand that the Bible is just you know, fragments of history that someone put together. Did you hear what I said? His story is somebody's story, right? And, and what we get to do is um, understand it as a, um, maybe a blueprint. And we understand that we can write our own stories. That's the bottom line there. So, in Egyptian astrology, the constellation uh, of Gemini was identified as twin goats. So you get a variation of uh, the different cultures and how they used um, the constellation and, and this energy. The Arabian astrology, um, they had twin peacocks that you know they uh, looked at. But I think that uh, one of the most important things that you want to take away from the fact that they were twins, how it can help us with energy is uh, to see that the energy was born at one was a demigod and one flesh, meaning that uh, it was a child of a god and one a mortal. With that information um, and you put it together, there's going to be a duality, you see. But once the mind, body, and spirit accepts that it is a demigod and a mortal, then you have a oneness that comes together. And this is um, this is not just with Gemini, but it's Gemini. It plays a good picture for us to look at and see that we are able to cross over into um, the higher self, the higher consciousness to uh, get into that place and um, let go of the energy of the mortality, the mortal. Um, we might see also by looking at this um, archetype and even working with it that um, the evolution in our DNA as a conqueror is so. And why is that? Because this archetype uh, is known to be part demigod and part mortal. Now, really the story around our lives is the same. Um, whatever a uh, religion you were brought up in, if you didn't, if you weren't brought up in one, the, the main thing about this is that people discover that something greater about themselves within and it's a higher power. Even if they're atheists, you know what I'm saying? And I don't wanna get into that, but just kind of like paint the picture that one of these guys were immortal and one was mortal um they didn't have to really be two different guys because when you look at duality within every human being 
there is that. And until they accept who they are, there's the contrast or the fight going on within them. So these brothers could come together and be one. They, and that's what the picture is. That's, you know, painting the picture for me. It's like, when I look at things in the, in the Bible, the guys, um, Esau and, and Jacob, I was talking about them last week, but I'm trying to convey the energy and how Jacob received um, the blessing of a higher powered um, thinking person, the consciousness, um, even though, you know, there was some trickery around it, uh, him getting the blessing. All right. So the DNA that we have is, is, um, we didn't come here to sit in one space. We, we came here to evolve. So the DNA is saying that. And with Gemini, um, it's painting the picture um, for us to be able to accept it because it's giving us a message that we have to unify within ourselves. You know, how do you unify with people when you can't unify with yourself? You're fighting with yourself, so then you will fight with others. That's, that, that's just, it's just as simple as that. There's no unity anywhere if you don't have unity in yourself, in myself. It, it's not possible. And that's one of the things that I feel is important to, to teach because we do have a lot of young people that are coming up and we have this dualistic energy and, and you know, a lot of places that we've been to uh, for worship or whatever, they don't teach that you're dealing with the self. All of that in that, those Bibles, wherever you went to church, I've read the Quran, all of this is the self, okay? So Gemini energy, um, phenomenal. Um, the uh, idea of understanding energy, again, is to choose to discipline ourselves when error thinking comes into our minds. And, and so how do you do that? If you think that you have lack all the time, you will have it until you stop thinking lack. That's error. Because you can't ascend or become a divine a, a mother or a woman feminine energy at, actually until you are um, beyond boundaries. Like a lot of people couldn't see how they're gonna make it through a pandemic, but I could see it crazy, but I could see it because if the system breaks, this is good, it's good. So I'll talk about that another time, discipline over ourselves, our minds, restructure our thinking patterns so that they're not like um, our, our parents and you know, the generations before us and um, use the, the twin power um, for what it's worth. Because when it becomes unified, you have God there. Now, God is in all of the archetypes if they, um, they change, but the ego is what has to be released, right? And it's not an easy thing here. This is transformation. So when you look at the twins, you have the ability, because that's what we're talking about, um, the ability to call them into oneness. They are not over there talking about, I'm doing this here and I'm getting, this is what I'm doing over here, okay? No, right here. And we're not feeding them messages on um, discord or what's going on in the world out there because the change for them is to come into unity like yin and yang. You see? So uh, choosing to work with the archetypes, this energy, um, or the archetypes to better our lives means we understand it is an energy that communicates and brings messages all the time. And what that means is, is that if you do not recognize that mercury is overthinking or causing you to overthink, um, it, you know, or over talk and, and over and under talk, then what you'll have is this overzealous type of um, energy going on and you 
will feel like you're stressed. You'll feel like, um, you know, your uh, energy is um, off or, you know, you got more energy going on than you can handle. And good things to do with that is to work out, work out, to walk, to walk. Um, because that brings uh, you into more balance. You can't get energy per se um, immobilized like Mercury's, and especially with what we're feeling now with the South and the North Nodes shifting into Mercury, actually that third house, you, you can't get it um, to stabilize unless you work with it. And the good thing about what you're feeling is that you can identify and you, you know, you go and look at um, something and say, well, am I feeling energy uh, from Mercury? And that's where you start to identify with the energy. And that's when you start to master what's going on in your body because you're saying, no, I can't, you know, I can't be over talking because, you know, whatever. And I can't be overthinking because I'm not going to sleep. It's going to burn me out. Um, and, and then we want to add this one. You can't be under talking. Because there's people out there that have mercury energy, but something may have happened in another life or even in this life that has caused them not to talk, and they need to, and that's going to bring balance to them. If they don't talk, that's going to be like this, the throat chakra blocked, and they won't be able to get an alignment completely. So we got overthinkers, overtalkers, and undertalkers here, and that's something to focus on because um if you over talk then how do you build a relationship mr and mrs mercury how do you do that if you can't listen to other people how do you build a relationship and that's just something to think about it may not be you guys that's on here but it could be someone that you know that has that energy and you can help them out with it um um, with with this sign again, you'll feel the anxiety, um, and 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 it's not per se anxiety. It is energy that you can feel, that you can learn, and you can teach it how to be balanced and how to work for you. That's what masters do. That's what they did. So nervous energy, and that's that's. Mercury's MO. It's, you know, if, we, okay, I'm going to go back to the under talking and over talking. So if we under talk or find ourselves listening to people more than um, having an opinion, we will feel we are not being heard, which means we are bottling up malefic in information and we can become explosive. That's where you get your passive aggressive people's, uh, people from. So this is important because this is a planet of communication. Um, it's small travels. Um, it's a marketplace, uh, planet, uh, energy, you know, so that means that, yeah, people are going to be creating, um, they're going to be creating stuff. Uh, they can create their jobs. It, it depends on the placement, but I'll tell you what, if you meditate and pray and you had a bad placement with any sign, that will change because the more you become spirit, the less you are of an archetype of energy concerning the zodiac sign. Okay. So the, the, the passive aggressive person that under talks, that doesn't talk a lot, um, there's a balance for them. So this is not good. All right. And, and that it's important for people to get that, because if you're not able to express yourself, then that means communication is bottled up within you and you will go on a rant and tirade. You don't understand why, because it's information inside of you that needs to be outside of you. You can't hold everything in your head because here, you know, this planet and this energy is, is, is working with our head. How can you bring unity within yourself when you got information that's bottled up within you? It has to be released. That's like going to the, to, to the restroom. You do it because if you don't, you're going to have problems. All right. So it's the same. And if you over talk, 
you can run people away because people need people. That means that we have to get a balance with listening, thinking, and talking. It has to be balanced. All right. So that, that's one of uh, Mercury's uh, challenges. It's a good thing um, because, you know, they can go on, people that have a lot of energy in Mercury, they can go on to be speakers. Um, Mercury, its energy, it, it, it's deriving from like Uranus. So uh, they're able to create as well. Um, yeah. So um, with duality, the number one thing is balance and bringing yourself into divine alignment, harmony. It's not outside your flesh you're dealing with, you're dealing with your inner, your inner man. And that's how you begin to better your life. Now, some of the people that um, they RSVP'd early on, they received um, the Gemini stones, which are a gate, black tourmaline and serpentine. Now I have to say this, I don't know what I did because I believe I sent Leo stones to some people. So forgive me, I'm gonna order anybody's that got a uh, Leo stones, you can keep those and I'm gonna get the, the right ones to you. But I was like, when I saw that, I was like, how did I do that? But then I said, you know what? They might need it for the creativity because you know Leo is um, really a master at creating stuff. So the angel for um, Gemini is Archangel Zadikiel. And this angel is known as um, the angel of memory. So you can really get an understanding of how important this mind is. It has an angel to call back memory and healing to the mind. And um, Zadikiel actually can be used for transformation. It has a purple type of hue. When you see purple, it could be him or her. I don't think they have sex, it's really. Uh, or it could be Azriel. That's another um, transformation um, angel. So if you get to a place where your mind, you know, you're having fogginess. And I know that some people did this week because Neptune was um, in, this, in the place yesterday. I don't feel it today. I don't know if anybody else is feeling foggy, but you can use it. Neptune um, was bringing in some energy um, in the last couple of days that with uh, these energies of Venus and um, um, Gemini that was uh, causing a questionable type of feeling. Um, am I depressed or am I at peace? Am I restless or am I who? What am I? Am I dreaming? And that's Neptune's energy. It's almost like you're floating, but you don't want to do that. You don't want to be in that kind of place because most people are used to that go-getter energy. And when you start getting in the energy that makes you kind of like feel dreamy and you can't wake up or you're in another place, you don't look at Neptune. That's a subconscious um, energy. So again, you know, it's about water and it's taking you in. And, you know, sometimes just go with the energy and just, if you can, relax into it because then you'll understand what relaxation is more. Because if you try to go against um, that type of energy, you could get some kickback because that's, you know, he rules the ocean. And so you're going to get emotions from yourself. If you try to push, you become frustrated and you don't know why. I said you will become frustrated with yourself because you're pushing the energy that Neptune has rather than going with it. What can you do to dissipate cloudiness? You can um, get some um, tourmaline. Um, and not small ones, you, you could get big, big tourmaline um, stones and it will ground you, um, that kind of thing. And, um, you know, you, could, you can also put your feet in cold water. 
Um, you can go outside to get grounded um, uh, by walking outside, you know, in the dirt, uh, standing up next to a tree, um, sitting outside more, even with this energy and with Mercury. All right. So a lot of things you can do. The main thing is, is I encourage people to research because I don't really, I don't know how to say it. I don't encourage people to just listen to, to people teach them. You might have something that's going to be uh, forthcoming that's going to be great. If you put yourself in a position to learn more about yourself. So, you know, if someone came up and, you know, they said something about Gemini and it was fascinating to you, you could tell them about the um, angel and how to get grounded if they were off balance with um, Neptune. Why? Because most people are having controversies and conflicts because of the way they feel. That's, that's why I started doing what I do. It's not, you know, that, yeah. I, you know, I'm a student and I guess I'll be a student and a scholar of behaviors. I want to know why we have to do uh, that. Why do we have to behave like that? And the reason why is because people don't know about the energies. We were told to do, you know, deal with the earth, but not with the heavens. And that is uh, so far off because if you don't know that you're talking too much and you just, oh, that's just me. No. It's not. That's not balanced. Why are we acquiring things in life that we don't want? Meaning acquiring nothing. Because we don't even know what we're working with concerning ourselves. We know we have an anatomy. We know that we have an outer presence, but we know nothing about our inner presence and the fact that energy affects us, positive and negative, right? So this here is the reason why I do it. I, because I start with myself. Do I want to go around uh, cussing people out? No. And I used to, I used to be very um, um, mean. And I'm not mean like that anymore. But I'm still mean. All right? So Zadikiel, transformation, and for the brain. Um, and I already explained to you. So you have the reasons why with the energy. Um, Cause a lot of people will come into classes and they just collect the inner information, but you need to know why, because the energies affect your behavior and you don't want that. You want to be able to master it and say, listen, I'm not going to stay feeling like this. I got to get up and do some stuff. I'm not, uh-uh. And, and, and this is, you know, a sign of it because people that, are depressed a lot of them are depressed because they feel and they don't understand that where's the feeling coming from right and so with neptune being there yesterday and the way that it was making people feel or my um, daughter-in-law told me all week she was like that then it causes conflict because you're miserable and don't know what's wrong with you or going on with you and everybody else is going to catch h-e-double-l because you you frustrated. So get frustration gone by knowing the energy that you're working with, um, even from this point, because this is a good one. All right. So your your sun and your ascending or your moon, you know, it tells the universe that you are ready for challenges that state you can rise above the winds of change. Now, what does that mean? You see, when you start coming into information like this, you're gonna get kicked back from who? The universe. Why? Because it's going to be like, oh, really? You, th you ready to do that? Okay, let's see if I throw all of this at you. That's just how it is because you got to be ready. Mastery is not about, <laughs> it's easy. It's about master this and that. You know what I'm saying? Like Kung Fu fighting or, yeah, transform is all that kind of stuff. Uh, Sci-fi. So. You understand your sun, you understand your ascending and your moon and how they're affected. Be honest with yourself. 
and you'll be able to master in time the winds of change. Now, how does this affect us in the physical world? Once you are um, changing, transforming within for good, you're going to start seeing good multiply out here. That's just how it is. But don't get caught up on the fact that you started now and you're getting kicked back because the universe and you know God, it's gonna be like that. You start just calling angels in uh, for protection and you'll be all right. It's not easy, so you have to want it. And I ain't trying to scare nobody, but I would have wanted someone to tell me um, some of this stuff. Not that I would have been able to back up because I had to do what I'm doing, but I would have liked to have known, okay? So um, just, you know, be in that place where you, you understand that you're going to grow up. When you're working with energies, it's invisible. That's spirit. You know, people talk about um, spirit and, and it's like, yeah. Yeah, it's not like that. I mean, some people see dead people. That means that you have a connection with the underworld or the heavenlies, right? That means that you're susceptible to other things that other people are not, pain and suffering, because you have the ability to see through gateways. All right? That's what this is all about. So um, let's look at. And I'm not scaring anybody because if you create it for it, you're going to do it. That's a place where if you challenged in whatever I'm saying, then you muscle up and you pray for yourself. Astrology um, applied to uh, medicine is an ancient type of thing. And um, I like to bring in um, physical areas that uh, the energies, whatever... Um, planet you know we're working with i like to get into that a little bit so um in uh this case with um gemini um medicine and astrologers assign signs of zodiacs to rule over parts of the body planets to rule over organs and systems and planets to rule over the disease and drugs the whole system is one of observation and interpretation uh, based on a complex system of giving rulership. So now when you, when you look at this, don't shrink back and say, okay, she, you know, she getting too deep. Because one of the reasons why people have ailments or they're struggling with things concerning their body is because they don't know this part. Like some people don't know that uh, Jupiter energy makes you eat a lot. Um, the people that have Jupiter, they, in the, they, they get their hips expand because Jupiter rules the hips and the thighs. I got a good dose of it earlier. Um, let's see, in, in December, I was like, what's happening with me? Because my left leg, I couldn't hardly move it. And I was like, I don't, you know, I don't have any pains. What, what is this? And it was my sciatic nerve. But then I said, oh my God, I, you know, I did, you know, study that. And um, it said about Jupiter that it was, you know, it causes um, hip uh, pain, sciatica. So think about this because when I, when we came on, I was talking about my hair and these are some of the things that our, um, our uh, grandparents, great grandparents used to discuss. Some of us heard it and some of us you know, didn't I did. And so we only washed our hair um, on Saturday evening, according to my great grandmother. Um, we couldn't um, bathe on Sundays. Like some people, you know, people get up every Sunday and they bathe. Now that was a no-no and you couldn't cook. So these were things that were brought up into our generations from our um, ancestors. And it was for a reason. And we'll find that we're getting back to that um, as time goes on. A lot of you are coming into um, different aspects of holistic um, uh, works because it's the only way of our survival. So, you know, with Gemini, 
um, again, it rules the brain. It deals with the nerves. And um, also, one could be affected by um, energies from Uranus because it is because Uranus rules the brain as well, areas of the brain. And that's why they, you know, people that have Uranian energy, they can be some um, way spaced out um, geniuses because they have this energy just coming in and they, they create like Steve Jobs. It's technical. Um, that's why everything went to um, internet when the pandemic came because Saturn was strapping Aquarius down, you see. So Mercury is like a child to Uranus. U Uranus affects it because they operate the same way except for Mer Mercury is a personal planet. It's smaller, all right? And uh, mercury also, it, it uh, rules over respiratory system. So if anybody has had like feelings of shortness of breath, that's why I know I have. Um, it will um, affect the arms, the shoulders, muscles, and some of the bones, excuse me, the lungs, uh, you know, the, the bronchial tubes, and areas of the hand. And um, so from here, I can tell you about um, your ascendant in each house. If any of you have your, um, your wheel, and if um, you don't, you could just write it down. Is someone there, you, you have something you want to say? I have uh, my, <clears throat> excuse me, my ascendant is what, Virgo? Okay, that's the sixth house. So in the sixth house, Gemini, if you have, you have Gemini in the sixth house? Uh, no, it's in my ninth house. Okay, so let's look at that. Um, so in her ninth house, um, it says learning a lot about other countries and cultures, law, academia, philosophy, spirituality, religion. Uh, there may be an in involvement with publishing or simple love of books. Now that's just for the ninth house with Gemini. It does not mean that other things won't come into play, right? Because we still have the third house that engages there, right? So those are some things to take away um, concerning the ninth house. Anybody else? I have Gemini in my eighth house. Can you speak up? I have Gemini in my eighth house. Okay, the eighth house, because your voice is low, but hopefully you can hear me. It's, it's, you, you may gather a lot of information about healing, psychology, and me and you talked about that, the occult or taxes and other uh, people's finances. So that's Scorpio's house. This here is uh, the ascendant. You guys remember. Well, I, my um, rising sign is Scorpio. Huh? My rising sign is Scorpio. Okay, then this is for you. Your rising sign is Scorpio. Yeah, rising uh, is most common, so good. Okay, who else? My rising sign is Leo, Prophetess Cam. Okay. It's in the 11th house. It says diverse friends, love of communicating in large and small groups. She loves to talk, so God bless. That's the truth. <laughs> it's nothing wrong <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with it. Um, so me, I'm just a straight to the point. I'm a teacher and it's like, okay, bye. The twin, if, you know, the twin energy with me is like, okay, I'm done, bye. So, um, you know, you have that social energy and that's what Leo's bringing. That's wonderful. 
So who else? My rising is cap. It's where? It's a Capricorn. Okay, so that is the 10th house. And um, it says multiple vocations. Um, okay. Uh, pursue simultaneously. So, you, you know, younger age, multitasker. Um, communication and problem solving becomes the key to career success. And, you know, with, with um, the 10th house, you, you kind of like have to remember those things because, uh, and, and wherever Saturn is, because Saturn will make you um, accompli accomplish slow. And that's another frustration because we have um, Saturn or Capricorn right now that's, you know, um, mandating things. And uh, people are frustrated because it's like a hold up on stuff. It's not a hold up. It's, it's nothing hindered. It's just the way that the energy of Capricorn, um, it moves. So if you take that out of your mind, like nothing is happening, if people are saying that to themselves, you'll be better off because you're in an energy with Capricorn that says, listen, you ain't doing nothing until I say do it. And that, that is because of the way that it flows, period. It's like the mountain goat. It takes its time going up the mountain, methodical. Because as it's moving, it's thinking. So remember that because we're going to be going into the end of the year, but Saturn will be um, dealing with Aquarius for three years. So you're still going to have a lot of slow energy. Peace. Okay, who's next? My rising is Leo. Okay, so I just read that one, but um, it says diverse friends, love of communication or communicating in large and small groups. So the 11th house is the house of Aquarius. and um going into the end of the year when aquarius and saturn are together for the next year and a half no i mean three years excuse me two three years something like that what you're going to find is people um finding their tribes in between now and then because that's what aquarius is about communication technology but it is a um community um energy you know it, it 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 likes to be about groups and so uh, mercury also is a small aspect of that because when you say aquarius remember that uranus is over aquarius but then capricorn is too and because capricorn is moving into aquarius this is where you're going to have um anybody that um, yeah, everybody is going to be affected by slow energy. So it's like, stop trying to do everything fast because that's not the way. If you do it fast, you might not get all of your fruit because while Capricorn is going through the zodiac sign and we, some of us are being, I would say at least 70% of us are being affected by it because it's a mass um, planet you want to do things slowly and the right way or it will send you back to do it again if it's not right you're going to have to like people are they going back to the same jobs it's a waste of time because it's going to be tore down again why because they ain't doing what they're supposed to do create a new economy and that's the, that's the thing that we have right here you know with all of these women here it's like you get um you you know get to a place where you can love on yourself and love others because it's a powerful time with venus um rising right now um venus is um going to be going through the eye of the bull and that means that there's a rising and um, I remember uh, Prophetess Kamoy giving me a, a 
reading about two years ago and she was like the, the phoenix is the phoenix is going to be rising and i was like oh, okay <laughs> so a lot of women are going to see that because as we have discussed the gemini energy um the yin and the yang is making its way back over um centuries that patriarchs have been ruling the world and that is going away the patriarch system is actually the capricorn system it was built on saturn and that's why you have saturn worshipers you know what i'm saying so that's that's some extra information to understand but what's happening to you all right now it's a good thing you know if you look at it from the spiritual point and you get to um the place of of looking at it that way it was good for me uh paul said that i was afflicted why because you learn from the affliction that's not um your flesh and it's not personal that's life what can you do to overcome um, any afflictions is change your mind and learn beyond uh, the place that your ancestors had been. Meaning like generation that you just came through and the, the one at, before them. Because what they did is not working for us. All right, any questions? I have a quick question. Um, do you believe that, for instance, how you said, if you don't take your time and do it now, are you going to do it again? That's why people are restarting their jobs. Okay, wait a minute. Re repeat that where you I can hear you. Like, you were saying that if you don't take your time and do it right, you're going to be doing it again. And some people fail to realize that they're doing it wrong and getting it wrong in the first place. Do it right. Now. Right. Like, uh, I don't know which one moved seven years or take eight years until it transit to something else or go back into direct or go retrograde. I'm not sure which one. But what if you like figure it out six years and half a year left? Do that count? Or we, or do you think you would still have to do them whole six years over again? Like, if you realize what it is you didn't do at the end. Yeah, I mean, um, honestly, <sighs> A lot of people are repeating stuff because they had to go back to, to kindergarten when they, <laughs> I'm joking, when you were in the third grade, no. Um, but you can't, you can't pass kindergarten until you learn what they gave you in kindergarten, right? And at some point, you know, if you're, if you're meditating or doing anything to heighten your consciousness, you should see that you're repeating, um, you're repeating situations we all have seen it so that means that um who's making us go back um the energy of saturn um or scorpio because scorpio um is the um, god of transformation it tears down and it builds up so if we don't build correctly then it's going to be torn down. And so someone might say, well, how do I get beyond that? You, you, you have the ability right now learning this here because when you go to each house, it has a reason why it's there, you know? And um, each house is significant, like the house of... Um, Scorpio, it, it deals with taxes. So that means that if you have been cheating on your taxes, um, it's, it's a good chance that that can come up and you'll have to pay it back. I'm just saying. Because it's, it, that's the house of taxes. So that's an um, example of tearing down. If you create a business right now um, in a retrograde, it may not be a good thing. If you had it already started before, this is good. But creating businesses in retrogrades, in most cases, um, it may not last. And I can tell you um, something um, 
when you when it lasts and you know and some some people you know they might say well this is too much um too much for me to have to go and look at all of this but if you're in a position to study it you should because that means that you're in a position to study it and that's speaking to you know to you right um if if i'm trying to understand if i should create a business what i'm going to do is know that there's a passion for something already that's a, i you know that identifies with if i'm going to do it my confidence will um tell me whether or not i'm actually going to pursue um The signs that I know are entrepreneurs are like Leo and Pisces and Scorpio and Gemini. Um, yeah, and, and Aries um, can do it too, but um, the parts of uh, most of them that will get restricted to do layman's jobs is going to be if they have um, Saturn aspects. Um, Pisces is a designer. So, you know, if you put Pisces and Scorpio together, you're going to have an entrepreneur. They, you know, and, and so that can help, you know, someone that doesn't understand if they know or if they should be creating um, their own job. Pisces are creators because they go subconscious. Leos are. That's one of the main things with Leos. So um, Leos, 90% of the time, they're not going to be able to stay in a, a job. They're going to create something. Look at Brittany. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, they'll like parts of their jobs, right? But take the parts that you like out of the job and create it for yourself. You know, if you can get someone to help you, if you have that desire, then you work on it because in this um, next year or so, uh, we already know that businesses are falling away and they are black owners um, with businesses, right? So um, we want to promote each other and excel each other. And so, you know, um, with this being the new moon, and you know, or uh, the full moon, I'm sorry, you want to look at those things, um, releasing old and letting the new come in and um, just focus on those things. And um, with it being a house of merchants, you're going to um, get information, even if you know or not, on um, creativity. Yeah. Um, communication, um, creativity. Um, yeah. Okay. Any more questions? I have a question. So my Mars, I mean, my Gemini is in Mars, which is in the 10th house. Um, I know that the 10th house represents like career and stuff, but I don't know how it correlates because my Gemini is all, my Mars is also in retrograde. Right in now? The 10th house. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah oh, my chart. It's in retrograde. Um, I think that the only, um, Aries and, um, the 10th house works well together. It, it's like, think about a person that, and that helps because of the energy um, and they're multitaskers. They're also uh, known to be from the medical uh, point of view. And that's what got me really looking at, you know, like my clients outside of working at home is that they, most of them are ADHD or ADD. So the, the energy works for you if you're, uh, if you're busy. And in that house, because there's a uh, multitasking, you know, um, in that 10th house, the person, if they are 
if they allow the energy to drive them there, they can become successful. Focus. Yeah. Yeah, it could be a contrast on energy too because of it being there in Saturn's house. But it's it's a good a good place because um, I um, am a Capricorn sun there, and um, I was a multitasker until I got into like forty five, fifty. Yeah, no more. I, one thing at a time. I'm ADHD or something. I'm ADD now from all of the multitasking. Anybody else? The only Gemini I have is in Jupiter, in my chart. Is that significant anyway? They are, where they, they are across from each other, right? Mm-hmm. So um, I think that they can oppose each other, you know, but yeah. it still can work together um, good. The energy can work well together because they actually, um, I think that if you have a, a Sagittarius that doesn't want to speak, they're good with uh, philanthropy and um, psychology, religion, and stuff like that, they, they want to stay right in the game. And then, you know, Jupiter expands and it creates more and more. It's an entrepreneur, but um, Mercury could tell it to talk and it won't talk. Because, you know, a lot of, a lot of um, Jupiterians, unless there's another aspect they don't they don't really like to talk they like to do yeah so that's um i don't think it's bad but you can get opposition within yourself because of gemini being there it's two-faced it and then um that energy from the horse man you know and that's one of the things too that other people don't understand that if you have a planet that is actually in a house and it's across from each other, it's gonna, it will have conflict within you. But the conflict is for you to settle it and for that energy to become one in that um, ninth house. What does it want you to do there? Communicate. Um, marketplace work um not overthink and that can become a problem uh for the two of them there because uh jupiter is uh, a thinking planet it's philosophical anybody else we at 111 i have a quick question <laughs> Yes, ma'am. Um, how do you, especially since we're coming into the Gemini um, new moon, how would you suggest we use these stones? Oh, um, you, you would um, charge them for yourself. And mm -hmm. um, I actually, I wear mine. Okay. Yeah. And with them being small like that, um, they will give back the protection that you need. And um the the memory help mm -hmm. but um yeah use the angel mm -hmm. thank you you're welcome how how often do you charge these um I, I i think that maybe every every week you can put them outside cleanse them um i know you can bury them um Some people use water and uh, moon water. You can, you know, you can catch moon water um, and, and not from outside, but by sitting your bottles of water out in your backyard or whatever, where it's safe. But yeah, um, you, you can charge them that way. So who uh, got the right stones and who didn't? 
I haven't got mine. No? Okay. That's I, I haven't gotten mine at all. Okay. Um, you said, Honora, you didn't get any? No, ma'am. Okay, so that's from the last two classes. Who else? Me. Jasmine and I got mm -hmm. ours. Okay. Jasmine and um so Honora and Brittany didn't. And all right, so then um then I wasn't in too much trouble about um Leo stones. I don't know how I did that. All right. So you it is what's supposed to happen, Prophetess Cam. There's no mistakes. That's what you were right. supposed to say. Yeah. That's true. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So you guys are, are good. Um that's that's the end of this uh class. And um anything before I close out? Thank you. Oh thank, thank you, Prophetess Cam. Thank you. I hope no, ma'am. Thank you, Miss Kim. Thank you, yeah, Miss Kim. You. I got my my page full of notes. I will call oh. you in the background so I can. Good. I hope you guys got, <laughs> right. I hope you guys um got a wealth of information. But more than that, I hope you got something that you can understand, study, and show yourself approved. Don't let people be just talking and teaching you. Mm -hmm. It's the greater worth within each and every one of us, and it wants to demonstrate. Yeah. All right. So God bless you all and thank you. Um, I'll let you know when the next um we we'll be doing um Taurus. Um and I, I you know I might come back uh and do um I didn't get into the north nodes, but yeah, that that would be um another one, but I'll let you all know I'll email you on it. Okay. Um, I got a question, Prophetess Kim. Do you do eclipse energy classes also? Because I know we got one coming up uh, in June. Are you going to be doing a class on the eclipse? I hadn't. Um, I hadn't put that uh, together, but it's it's a good one because you know what you, you know you what was getting rid of. What's the date? Yep, um, it is June fifth. It's oh, a wow. Yeah. June fifth. How about that? Some people gonna they don't yeah. know they're gonna be having something clipped out of their life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's also a full moon too. Not only is it a yeah, it's um um it's an eclipse on the full moon energy. What do you oh, want? To know? It's good. Yeah, full moon in cancer. Yeah, full moon in cancer. Oh jeez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, I can't wait to get into that. I'm so, oh my gosh, yes. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, let's let's see if we can get together on it. And so, um, thanks everybody for coming on. And I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you uh, received something that you can use. Like some of you guys should be looking at your timelines and those eclipse. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I'm gonna be tracking mine. That's oh, like a lot of a lot of times y'all be on there listening to YouTube people, and they talking about they clipping off your relationship, but it's clipping off some relationships you you didn't want anyway. Some of the stuff you yes. went through is clipping off because it's going from this Venus retrograde into um into all of that um, eclipse. So mm -hmm. the energies and are going. Mm -hmm. And Prophet is Kim, when you do the class, could you go into like, because um, I think a lot of people don't understand, like this happens over a series of time. So if you can also like explain like the transit of time, because people think sometimes eclipse happens today, like shit is, oh, sorry, I'm not, my bad about the curse words. <laughs> um, and things happen. <laughs> no, I'm going to do the class with you. I'm going to work, I'm going to work with you. So work you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, the eclipse. Okay. Yeah, it is. Um, it's a timeline for eclipse, and um, that means that it's still some Cancer energy that was coming from the North <laughs> Node and Cancer and Capricorn, and those eclipse because they line up. They're all the same, like 
we'll have Eclipse with Gemini and all of that coming up. So they um, line up. But you know what I would tell um, the tell you guys is to go back and look at where you know Gemini was. Um, like even for Venus retrograde, and you're gonna see what's going on right now and then, right? Okay. 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 So, one last quick question. Mm -hmm. For those of us who are wanting to learn astrology, do you recommend a particular website or a program that we can use or start with? Um, one of the ladies that I, um, I didn't really learn from her, um, but I got information from her, um, Molly McCord. Oh, I watch her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. She's in my list too. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um. Uh, okay. Yeah, it just depends on how you're being led to do it. Cause I um got my own books. Things would stand out, and I would become interested. And so, um, one of the main things is like talking today. How we can feel that um the energy. You know, you can mm -hmm. feel it. And. Some people would say, well, you know, I got, you know, they it, they would say like the church anointing. No. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how you, you know, but no, because uh, it's a vibration, but it's um, significantly showing you something. So then, okay, again, if you can see how it's affected um, you or me as we're coming into um the mercury energy then we can know that is what we're feeling and we define it you define it you know um, all of them have their own um way of of telling you um when you really tap into it what what they are about because you, you get into a place where you're like oh this is how um the goat does or you know, Scorpios, they start investigating stuff. Your mind investigating is like, why are you doing that? Oh, this is Scorpio energy. Mm -hmm. So pay attention to how, you know, and then question why it's happening. And that's going to be a good way for um, you to understand. But Molly McCord, I ordered something from her and that's when I was learning my own chart. So okay thank it's the you. only one that i like like that yeah yeah okay so i um enjoyed everybody um kayla it's good to see you on honora ashley Brittany, and um somebody on with an iphone i don't know if that that's probably this boy um jasmine lala and um Nyla. Thank you guys for coming on and um, for being who you are, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Thank you. All right. You guys have a, a good day. And um, wait a minute. What time is your uh, full moon class? Uh, it is at 6 p.m. Eastern. Okay, yeah, I'm going to try and come. Well, yeah. That's just three, that's at 3 o'clock, right? That's 3 o'clock. Yeah, my, um, time? my time. Oh, yeah, three o'clock your time, six o'clock my time. Oh, okay. All right. I, I think I'm yeah. gonna come on. Okay. See y'all okay. later. Bye bye. 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 Bye.